Now we move on to Kepler's second law. Kepler's second law says that a planet's orbit will sweep out equal areas in equal periods of time. What does that mean? Well, here in this image, I've got an orbit of a planet around the sun, an elliptical orbit. So the sun is at one of the two foci of this ellipse. Our planet is gonna move from position one to two here. It's gonna do that in some period of time, t. As it does that, a line connected between the sun and the planet will move through this area shaded in B, shaded in yellow that we are calling area B here, okay? So that area B, we move from position one to two with some time T in order to get that area B. Now we're going around our orbit. We come over here, some period of time, then I'm moving between position three and four here. And I'm moving along this orbit in the same period of time t that I did over here between points one and two. So between points three and four, it's taking me the same amount of time to move from three to four here. And so the line connecting my planet and the sun sweeps out an area here, shaded again in yellow and represented by the area A. Same amount of time to move from position three to four and to position one to two. So those areas must also be the same size. So if area A is equal to area B, then the time it took for the planet to go through position one to two is the same as the time it took the planet to go from position three to four. So that's sweeping out equal areas in equal amounts of time. A consequence of this is that when a planet is close to the sun, it's gonna move really quickly. And when it's far away from the sun, it's gonna move more slowly. Okay, why? Well, remember, we would had to do the same amount of time to sweep out the same area around the orbit. Um, but when we're here closer to the sun, that same period of time, we have to go a longer distance than we have to do when we're far away from the sun over here. Same amount of time, but we go a shorter distance. So your speed is your distance divided by your time. So if you're going the same amount of time, but over here um, between points one and two, we're going a larger distance, that means our speed must be increased when we're over here at our position closer to the sun than when we are farther away from the sun. And so uh, the speed at which a planet orbits around the sun, we call that the orbital speed. So this orbital speed varies over the course of a planet's orbit around the sun. And then we come to Kepler's third law. Kepler's third law says that planets orbit the sun obeying this relationship right here. P squared is the orbital period of the planet. That's how long it takes the planet to go around the sun once. A is the semi-major axis. Semi-major axis is essentially the distance between the center of your ellipse and the edge of the ellipse on its most elongated side. Okay, that's the semi-major axis. So the orbital period squared is proportional to the semi-major axis cubed. Remember, if something's squared, you take that number times itself twice, that's the two here, exponent. And if something is cubed, you take that number times itself three times, that's what the exponent three here means. So the consequence is that the further a planet is away from the sun, that's its semi-major axis, the longer its orbital period, that's P. So if A increases, P increases too, okay? So over here, we can test Kepler's third law using, uh, using data, using data like, uh, like Kepler did. So here we have the planet in our solar system. Here's the semi-major axis listed in astronomical units. And then we have their period in years, their orbital period. That's the time it takes the planet to go around the sun once in Earth years. What you do to check does Kepler's third law hold is to take the square of the orbital period of the planet, see what that number is, and take the cube of the semi-major axis for that planet and see what that number is and see if they equal each other. So if P squared, the orbital period in years squared, is very close to the semi-major axis cubed of that planet, then you know that it is going to obey Kepler's third law. All planets should be 
pretty close to obeying Kepler's third law anyway, okay? So this law we find to hold within our solar system and others too. Another component of this is angular momentum. So regular momentum is just the mass of a body times its speed, mass times velocity. But angular momentum is um, a rotational equivalent of regular momentum, mass times velocity. So if you are going around something in a circle or an ellipse, your angular momentum is your mass times your orbital speed around that, map, that circle or ellipse and the radius of that orbit or the average distance between the center of that orbit and the edge of the orbit around which you're going. Okay, so the angular momentum is your mass times velocity times your distance from the center, average distance from the center of your circular or elliptical path. And the cool thing about objects in our solar system and most other solar systems too, is that the angular momentum of solar system objects remains roughly the same. That means that the angular momentum is conserved. When something is conserved, it stays the same, it's unchanging. So that means that if we calculated the angular momentum for Mercury and calculated the angular momentum for all the other planets up to Neptune, if we looked at that angular momentum, those the, the value that we calculate is gonna be the same for for roughly the same for all of our solar system objects. So even though Mercury has a larger orbital speed, its distance away from the sun is smaller. As we go out toward Neptune, the orbital speed is gonna decrease, but the radius is gonna increase. And the velocity is gonna decrease as we move away from the sun, and the radius is gonna increase away from the sun. And all those quantities will change proportionally such that the angular momentum of the system remains unchanged. Whenever you're closer into the sun, you're gonna be orbiting it more quickly. Whenever you're further away from the sun, you're gonna be orbiting the sun more slowly. I'm going to demonstrate here conservation of angular momentum. So I have my stool here that spins and I have two masses that I'm going to move further away from me, further away from the rotational center, and closer to me, closer to the rotational center, and you're gonna see what happens. This whole time, angular momentum is conserved. Okay, so here I go, I'm gonna start spinning. Okay, and watch what happens when I put my arms out and then bring them back in again. If I'm conserving my angular momentum, that means that my, the mass of these objects times their velocity around the circle uh, times their distance away from the circle must be the same, must be conserved at all times. And so the mass of these bodies are not changing, but I am changing their distance away from the rotational center. So the closer they are to the rotational center, the faster they're going to be moving around the circle. And the further they are away from the rotational center, the slower they're going to be moving away from the circle. And if my angular momentum is conserved, I'm going to reduce my orbital velocity, how fast these masses are moving around the circle when I move them in and out. Okay? So that's the conservation of angular momentum. Whether the masses are here or here, the angular momentum is the same, but I can change the orbital speed of these masses around the circle um, depending on how far away I move them from the center of my rotational axis. Okay. Well, let's do it again. Slow down, bring them back in to me, closer to me, spin them up. This is just like an ice skater. Um, when she brings her arms closer into her body, she spins much faster. When she moves her arms further out, she spins slower. Okay, that's conservation of angular momentum, just like what's happening in our solar system. Uh, planets that are closer to the rotational center are going to be moving around with the faster orbital speed, and planets that are further away from the rotational center are going to be moving around with a slower orbital speed, but the whole time their angular momentum remains the same.